Hi everyone, I hope you're well. I think I'm going to try and keep this video short because I've already tried to make it once in a rambly kind of way and I felt like I was in trying to unpack too much um, live on camera kind of thing. Um, I, I was really just kind of, kind of tying myself up in knots. So this is an idea that I will probably come back to again um, in a blog post or something because I find it easier to sort of unpack more complex ideas in writing obviously than than just speaking here on the camera. And I prefer to make videos very kind of off the cuff and chatty rather than sort of pre-planning them or writing out notes or anything like that. That's just kind of how I prefer to do things because if I'm gonna write out notes, I might as well kind of write a blog post if you see what I mean. And I like things to be more kind of chatty and spontaneous here on the, on the YouTube channel. But um, I just kind of had this thought and some ideas were floating around my head um, Based, based on a very good friend of mine who post it, posted something on Facebook and when I came home after university I just I read this online and it just kind of got me thinking about this question and um, she posted I vacillate between regarding all things as sacred and nothing as sacred hashtag no lives matter so I mean there's a, there's a certain element of facetiousness there obviously um, but this really got me thinking about the question, the problem of sacredness, the problem of divinity, and particularly for anyone who considers, considers himself to be a pantheist or indeed a naturalist. So any of us who either, um, that we don't see the universe as being as sort of enchanted as other pagans do, um, that you know perhaps we don't really hold any firm beliefs about there being any sort of um, magical or um, supernatural elements to the universe um, beyond what science can actually observe. Um, and then it's just kind of a general problem of pantheism, uh, that if everything is sacred, which is a really wonderful, um, a really sort of, um, I, I, I feel it's a very, very positive kind of um, attitude, but then, you know, I'm quite biased because that is just how I see things. To my mind, if anything is sacred, then everything, everything must be sacred. But it does kind of cause this problem. I've mentioned this a couple of times before that if, if A equals B, then why bother calling it B? So if you, the universe equals God, why bother calling it God in the first place? Why bother considering it to be divine? And this is something that I've talked about mostly in blog posts, I think, um, at some length and um, how, you know, to me, it's a choice. It is a conscious choice to call the universe divine, to address the universe or cosmos as God or goddess. Um, that is a conscious choice. It's a lens that I have just specifically chosen, consciously chosen, um, to apply to my understanding of the world. Um, not because I necessarily think that there is anything, not because I think that applying that label to the universe makes it different or implies that it is different to how a scientist or a, you know an atheist um, a scientific naturalist might, might see things, but just because um, it is a choice, it's a way of seeing things, it's a way of understanding things, and it's just a perspective, um, almost, almost an aesthetic. Um, but there, this problem does arise then, that if everything is sacred, then can anything really be special? Um, can one thing be more sacred than, than another? Um, and this is another thing, I mean, I've, I've talked about this before as well in relation to environmentalism. And this is why, for me, my environmentalism is not actually completely, it's not a byproduct of my spirituality or my religiosity. Um, to me, my environmentalism is primarily a service to other human beings and other animals and other species on the planet as they are right now. It's not a service to goddess. It's not a service to cosmos as such, because if everything is sacred, then this is just one tiny, tiny part of a massive product and a massive process. Um, and who are we to say that the destructive process that is happening right now is a result of human beings on the earth? Who's to say that that's not just as sacred as those processes that we see as being more natural? To my eyes, it is all natural. Um, and it, just because it's destructive doesn't mean it's not natural. And just because it's destructive doesn't mean it's not sacred. Um, but of course, that doesn't mean that I don't think we should be trying to um, reverse that destructiveness because, but like I say, that's a moral issue to me. And morality for me is a lot more tied up with sort of um, humanism and just 
wanting to wanting to limit the amount of damage and the amount of pain that I'm causing on this planet to other people, to other animals, to plants, to the to, to just the environment, to um, the ecosystem. And it's really, like I say, I find it difficult to apply it, to connect that directly to um, my spirituality or my religiosity or any concepts directly associated with divinity or the sacred. Because, like I say, if 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 the ecosystem as it is, or as it has been for millennia now, um, if that's sacred, um, then you know why why should that be? It, it, why should that be more sacred, basically, than the destructive, than the destructive process? And I know that this will press a lot of buttons, and it's something I like. I said I've mentioned it before. I have talked about it in videos before. I've written blog posts about it before. Some people get very angry about this, and that's completely okay. I feel like that's. That's an acceptable response and that's not how it is for everybody and I accept that and I respect that and like I say it's not that I think it doesn't matter but this is this is the question of specialness um, what is it can we say that um, maintaining a healthy balanced ecosystem can we say that there's something special in that that there's something special in the status quo in the balance on this planet that has allowed life to thrive uh, can we say that that is special or indeed, um, in those moments of kind of when we feel like we're connecting to the divine, when we have those moments of kind of sacred awe that we feel are special. Um, and even for those of us who don't really consider ourselves to be religious, but if we have that moment um, where we just experience something beautiful, or we have a moment in, like, when we see something in nature, when we observe um, a beautiful uh, landscape or a piece of art or a piece of music that moves us, something that makes us think that that is special, um, yeah, how can we how can we sort of logically separate that from any other experience in our lives if we are indeed pantheists and if we do indeed believe that everything is sacred? Um, and it is it is a bit of sort of a conceptual problem because I'm big on experience. I'm big on thinking and talking about experience rather than sort of beliefs and simply the practice without sort of looking at the experience. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't want to just look at um, the structure of things and I'm not really so interested in the, the, the nitty gritty of um, yeah the structure of things the the actual materiality of things I'm more interested in what the subjective experience is that people have from that habit from that practice from that belief um, which is quite a hazy thing it's a hazy thing to try and grapple with and it's something that um, in an academic sense I probably won't be grappling with a whole lot, certainly not straight away, because it is tricky. Uh, particularly in from a kind of a sociological perspective, it's a tricky thing to grapple with. Um, and I have quite liked this concept of specialness, which there's a scholar called Anne Taves who um, kind of wrote a bit about this concept of specialness, uh, using this concept instead in place of the term sacred uh, because the term of you know the idea of the concept of the sacred is so problematic particularly in um in the study of religion and she was looking for a concept that would be less problematic and but that could sort of imply something similar or a similar kind of experience that could be used to describe the kind of experience that i'm talking about um, and i think that is very useful and i definitely think i mean i don't want to homogenize existence i don't want to homogenize our experience of the world because um, I'm a human being too who has spiritual experiences, who experiences love and awe and, and wonder and beauty and joy and sadness and the rest of it. Um, and there is something really special <laughs> in those moments that are just separate from other things. And the, you know, that is, that is something that I want to acknowledge and that I want to um, incorporate into how I see things, into how I understand um, cosmos. But like I say, you know, if everything is sacred, then can anything actually be special? And in what way can we understand them to be special? Um, is it just about our own consciousness? And is, is this, maybe this is linked into, and this is kind of the way, the direction my, my thoughts have been going on this, perhaps it's, perhaps it's just linked into that way that, that justification that I have for calling the cosmos, for calling the universe God or goddess, um, which is just that it is a conscious choice, that it's just a lens, that it's just a decision that I'm making because I enjoy the um, the product, I enjoy um, what comes of that, and that, that, that is meaningful to me. And, and that I prefer, from a purely subjective standpoint, I prefer to, um, to think about it from that way, and I think it's more productive and more... 
um, more positive, uh, for want of a better word. Um, so perhaps this concept of specialness is similar, that we can decide to consider certain things special or more sacred because it's useful to us, because it touches on some sort of experience that we're having. And those experiences may indeed just be our a uh, higher level of consciousness of um, our own decision to experience things as sacred, to decide that things are sacred, to view things through that lens. So I hope that made some semblance of sense. Um, I might actually write a blog post on this because like I say, um, I kind of thought I would just wanted to do a quick video and then unpack my ideas on this again later. And it's an idea that I keep coming back to, um, but every time I do come back to it, I think I have a diff slightly different perspective. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where that goes if I do decide to write about it again. So yeah, I hope you're all well. I hope that that was interesting and um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Any ideas or, or thoughts or whatever, just throw them out there. And if I don't get back to you, if I don't reply, I do apologize, but I do actually read all the comments, even if I never actually get the time to come back and reply to all of them.